All right, guys, today's lesson is all about creating speed, angular speed in particular, a very controversial subject. It's almost like the pendulum swung from one end to the other over the years with teaching. It's like it's all about using the body, you know, tie your hands and arms to your body and spin your way to more speed. Don't use your hands. They're evil. Never use your hands. Can you overuse your hands? Yeah, you can overuse your hands. Hands can cause all sorts of trouble. Is the body involved in the golf swing? Of course it's involved in the golf swing. It's a kinematic chain, guys. Lower body, upper body, arms, hands, club. Definitely not suggesting that that's not the case. I would be truly wrong if I did that. But, and this is the big B, guys, most golfers haven't learned how to articulate their wrists correctly. In my opinion, it's a marriage. It's like a dance, really. The hands and arms have to be swinging as the body is turning, right? Hands and arms swing, body turns. If you don't pay any attention to what your wrists are doing in a golf swing and you create a lot of tension in here and you expect that if you just turn your body, the club face is miraculously going to square up, you're going to have some problems. There is timing in the golf swing. That's another thing. People say yeah, there's no timing and you shouldn't have to rely on rhythm. That's absolute rubbish. You have to rely on rhythm without any question. So where do I start? I start with the grip. That's the logical place to start it's your only connection to the golf club so make sure you grip the club in the fingers good golfers have good grips variations no question but good golfers have the club primarily in the fingers of their lead hand because it enables them to articulate their wrists i can turn that club upside down very very easily this is radial and ulnar deviation it's the ability to be able to hinge the club up and down in the golf swing and remember guys the hands and arms control the verticals in the golf swing okay they control the verticals and the body very much controls the horizontals. And that's how we get that nice marriage in golf. If you've got too much horizontal, you're gonna have all sorts of problems. Got too much vertical and no horizontal, you're gonna have some problems. The hands and arms drop, the body turns, the hands and arms swing up on the way through as the body turns. We've gotta figure out how to coordinate these moving parts. Not the easiest thing to do, but I like to start with the club head first, okay? Start with the club face, start with the grip, understand your hands are synonymous with the club face. I'm going to give you a little trick here that's always going to keep the face in a reasonably good position. If you think about it for a second, when you grip the golf club, both hands are to the side of the golf club, left hand to the left, right hand to the right as a right-handed golfer. If I maintain that position throughout my golf swing, in other words, if my hands remain to the side of the golf club, my club face is always going to be oriented in a pretty square position relative to the plane. What I mean by that is right now my hands are to the side of the golf club. You can see the club face is parallel to my spine angle. If I get my right hand under and my left hand over here, my hands are no longer to the side of the golf club. You can see I fanned it wide open. Conversely, my left hand's too far under right hands too far over my club face is in a very close position it's no different through impact okay all these different positions in the golf swing be a little bit overwhelming so i like to look at this as more of a sort of macro picture especially when it comes to trying to transfer these skills to the golf course so you can't break your swing down into 10 different parts guys and expect to go out there and be able to play decent golf it's an athletic motion it's a dynamic motion okay so on the way through no different my hands are now to the side of the golf club i've released the golf club freely that looks pretty darn good okay i don't have my left hand on top and my right hand underneath conversely of course i don't want to be rolling my forearms either you see the right hands on top left hands underneath so let's keep it real simple always keep your hands to the side of the golf club that's where they start and that's where they're going to stay so let's talk about some drills okay what drills can we perform that are going to allow us to articulate our wrist to get some energy into the club head there's a number of drills that i've used over the years that worked extremely well i learned this one when i was seven years old hit balls with your feet together okay if you hit balls with your feet together you do too much with your body you're going to lose balance all right so we just use a t put a ball on a t go ahead and put your feet together opposite the golf ball and just swing your arms around your body from right to left and stay in balance right you start to throw your body at the golf ball you start to early extend for example you're going to lose balance if you sway you're going to lose balance if you slide you're going to lose balance so you can cure a lot of woes if you're on the driving range and struggling by just putting balls on tees working on your rhythm and hitting balls with your feet together it's unbelievable i'm just going to do that right now just work on my rhythm swing my arms back and through nice and easy 
Notice I'm in balance here. I'm not trying to overswing. So what does that drill do essentially? It keeps us swinging around our spine. It keeps us quieter with our body motion. Quieter guys with our body motion. Okay, it's not that the body's not moving, but it's moving a lot quieter. And it gives you the feeling of isolating your hands and arms a little bit more on your golf swing. Important to relax the joints, not the grip. We've got to maintain some grip integrity here, okay? But the joints, the wrists, the elbows, and the shoulders. If you can relax your joints, it's going to make the world a difference. No question about that. Most people have way too much tension. doesn't allow the club to swing freely. So hit a few with your feet together and don't think about anything else. Just to start off with, get on the range. Give that a shot, okay? Very, very important. Once you've done that and you're starting to feel comfortable, what we want to do here is we want to try, try and create some angles in the golf swing. This is where this angular speed is going to come from. You have to create angles in order to go ahead and release speed as you strike the golf ball. I'm not hitting it anywhere, taking it back like this. Okay, I've got nothing to come down with. So what we're looking for here is left arm parallel, club to the sky. Same thing on the way through, okay? Left arm parallel, club to the sky. A lot of you have heard this before. It's an L to L drill. I like to call it a hitchhiker drill. But what we're essentially doing is we're allowing the wrist to hinge, unhinge, and rehinge on the opposite side of our body. And we're going to do it very, very freely. We're going to hinge, unhinge, and rehinge. The club head essentially is going to swing up, down, and up. Okay. Am I trying to get you to release the club early? No. Am I trying to get you to flip it through? No, that is absolutely not my objective. Please don't confuse this, okay? I want your hands to the side of the golf club. Remember, we just talked about that. So as I'm hinging, unhinging, rehinging, you can see right here, my hands are remaining to the side of the golf club throughout this entire motion. They're still to the side. I go ahead and face the camera here. So they remain to the side of the golf club here, okay? That puts my lead wrist in what's called an extended position, a little bit of a cupped position, which really keeps that club face very, very stable. I do not want an open to close release pattern. That's the last thing I'm looking for, and that is not what I'm teaching here. What I'm teaching here is to keep the club face remarkably square relative to the plane of the golf swing, but learning to articulate your wrists is very, very important. Again, most people are so stiff-wristed, we see a lot of this, all right? A lot of tension in here. So the club head is moving through the ball at the same speed as my chest. So I put this next to my chest and try and move this as fast as I can, you're not really hearing a whole lot of speed here. Whereas if I swing my hands and arms, you see me hinge, unhinge, rehinge, completely different. Boy, I can stick this thing right next to my right belt loop here and move my hips. All right. I mean, is this move important? That move and that move? Of course it's important. That's a huge part of the golf swing. I'm not suggesting we don't use our body correctly. Okay. But to say that it's the speed in the golf swing comes from the legs or from the hips is insanity. No question. It adds leverage and it adds speed and it adds power. I'm not suggesting it doesn't add to those things. But 75% of the speed in the golf swing comes from the articulation of the fast twitch muscles, in particular in the wrists. No one can argue that. So why don't we learn to use those wrists correctly, okay? So hitchhiker drill, feet together. Don't get too wide just yet. Little practice swing first, not hitting at the golf ball. Look at that, I'm actually allowing my speed to go somewhere. I'm giving my speed a home. How about that? I'm not dragging the club around the corner here. I'm not stiff wristing it. I'm going to give it a little bit of pop, the golf ball, give it a little bit of snap. Okay. And we're going to see what happens here. Feet together. Love it. All right. So there's my L to L drill or hitchhiker drill. That's the second drill here. Another drill I absolutely love is split hands. So go ahead and take your regular grip split your hands here. This is a great drill for getting the feeling that the butt end of the golf club is moving back towards us at impact. So the club head's going out as the butt end of the club is coming in. And then the club, of course, is changing direction. And the faster we can get that club changing direction from one side of our body to the other in the shortest space of time, the faster the club head is moving. Hopefully that makes sense. 
okay? If I go from here to here, like this, holding onto the club head, that's a linear speed, okay? Angular speed is when we actually change direction here. The club moves from this direction to this direction in a very short space of time. And it's being supported, guys, by the rotation of my body. So split your hands on the golf club, and let's get a little energy out here into the club head. Give it a little pop. Feel the club change in direction. I'm going to keep the butt end of the club, guys, facing me. Okay, the club's facing me. Now, it may appear to you like that's a little bit flippy. The truth of it is, it's not, is it? You can see here, as I'm coming through, my shaft is up against the golf ball here. I'm not throwing the club head out, but as I move in the opposite direction, I'm going to allow that club here, look, to rotate. I'm not going to hold on to it. I'm not going to get my elbows pointing up, okay? So let's get a little energy out into the club head here. Again, butt end of the club's going to feel like it's moving up towards me. Club head's going to move out away from me. Certainly not going to be dragging that handle forward here. I'm going to let it release freely. Feel like my right arm is working to the side of the golf club here. It's not underneath the handle. It's working to the side of the golf club. Wonderful feeling is actually the right forearm should feel like it's kind of touching the left on the way through. This sort of a look would be ideal. We don't want this. That's the last thing we want, okay? So doing this drill really helps you get your forearms rotating beautifully. It takes a bit of practice, just like all things. Here we go. All right. So that's the split-handed drill. Again, it helps you get that club head swinging more freely. It helps the wrists articulate, which is really important. So give that one a try, okay? And we've got one more we're going to talk about. All right, last drill. Love this drill. Momentum drill, okay? You're going to give the club a little bit of a head start. So instead of dragging that club away, it actually starts forward here, and then we swing. The golf club's going to swing up. And by having it go forward first, it makes that a lot easier. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take our regular grip. I'm going to get a little bit wider, but still keep our feet narrow for all of these drills. Okay, I'm going to start over here. Butt end of the club's pointing at me. Okay, I'm not starting over here. This isn't what I'm looking for. This isn't what we're working on. But I am going to get that club in the position where it's been fully released. The butt end of the club is pointing at my belt line. You can see my hands are to the side of the golf club. So I'm starting here. And then from here, if I just swing the club very, very easily, you can see there's plenty of room from here to swing the club in the opposite direction. And then we can get it back to exactly the same position. So this is kind of the destination through impact. And then we're going to swing back. And then we're going to swing back through again. It looks something like this. So here's your momentum drill. So we're here. Boom. And then we're through. All right, right over the flagstick. Absolutely love that one. So that's your momentum drill. We're going to start to do here as we make bigger swings is we're going to start to engage those bigger muscles. And that's where you have your cake and eat it too. The last thing I want you guys doing is just slapping at it with your hands and arms. That's not it. But you are learning to articulate your wrist. You're learning to move the club head freely. You're learning to keep your hands to the side of the golf club, which is all important. But what we can do here is through impact, rather than just swinging the arms past the golf ball, we can start to engage the lower body a little bit more. And what I mean by that is don't just turn your hips, because people get into a lot of trouble when they do that. Anytime I've got people trying to rotate their hips, they're normally bringing their pelvis out towards the golf ball. It causes the body to stand up. With my students, what I found is to try and help them feel some pressure into the ground, in particular with their lead heel. It works wonders. I worked on this 25 years ago, okay? It's incredibly important to feel the pressure in your feet. And now, of course, we've got amazing tools like SwingCat that show what the best players are doing and prove all along that there's not a lot of movement out towards the toes as people strike the golf ball. There's usually more movement back towards the heel. So we're going to use that left knee and quadricep. We're going to kind of feel like that leg's working back behind us a little bit more, and that's going to facilitate the rotation in the pelvis. A great image as you're doing this is imagine that you're actually crushing a bug underneath your left heel. It doesn't get much more simple than that. So when I make contact with that golf ball, when I'm releasing my golf club, at the same time I'm doing that, I'm going to start to feel like right around the impact position here, I'm kind of kicking the ground a little bit with my lead heel. So what I'm doing is I'm getting into a nice, firm lead side. My left side needs to be firm. I need to be tall. What I don't want to be doing is having my left leg be like a spaghetti noodle. When you talk about body dynamics, that's a nightmare. Because if you think about it, 
as a right-handed golfer, I, I want to be able to fire the right side of my body at the right time, which is much later than you think. We're not firing it from up here, guys. We're firing it from down in here. But I do want to fire that right side. So I can't bring my right side through unless I've got something firm to turn against, okay? So I need a firm left side in order to fire my right side. That's important to understand. So again, it all goes back to kind of feeling like you're kicking the ground with your left heel as you're swinging your arms, okay? Now we're gonna have this nice marriage between the two. Let's see if we can bring them together. So I'm gonna make some swings here and you're gonna to start to see, there's my drills sort of coming into place. My hands and arms swinging freely. Here's my impact position, all right? So as I'm moving into impact, I'm starting to feel like my lead leg is working up, the left side of my body isn't getting collapsed, it's not dropping, I'm not losing height, that's the worst thing you can do. But what we wanna make sure we do here is, we've gotta get those hands and arms working down in front of us before we start kicking the ground. We've gotta load that lead heel by the time we strike the golf ball, make sure you do it at the right time. So it's gonna look something like this. Arms drop, body turns. All right, and that's a little bit more of a supported release. So now I'm starting to engage my core a little bit, which is really important, but I've got a ton of freedom there, guys, in my hands and arms. I've got lots of freedom. I'm not tense, I'm not tight. I'm gonna do it one more time. Let's re-hinge this one on the opposite side of my body. Can't hit it much better than that. That's just a three quarter seven iron out there is all that is. So you can see here, it's something like layers really. What you're doing here is adding that body ingredient a little bit later on in the process. So take care of the drills first. Get your hands and arms hinging, unhinging, rehinging, then start to engage that lower body at the right time. Don't twist and turn your body too soon. You're gonna throw the club out all day long. So I hope that helps, okay? Go through those steps, go through the drills. I know it's gonna make a world of difference to your ball striking, and most importantly, you're gonna be creating a lot more club head speed. So have fun with it.